quiz of ice and fire. Hello and welcome to Radio Westeros. I'm Yoke Boy. And I'm Lady Guinevere. Welcome to our third quiz of Ice and Fire. These quizzes are bonus episodes, meaning there's no patron charge, just a quick and fun way for us to provide a little extra entertainment. You're just having some fun with some A Song of Ice and Fire trivia. And so a quick shout out to all of our patrons, without whom there wouldn't be bonus episodes. So thanks so much for the support. Okay, so today the theme is swords. Now, there are many swords in the books. They are a staple in fantasy literature, and George certainly embraces that in A Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, and today's quiz will pose trivia questions regarding swords from the tiniest of needles to the flaming lightbringers. And so you can play at home, alone or with others, and we think it's a great way to brush up on details you might have forgotten. Yes, we do. Okay, so let's get started then. Grab your pens and pencils. We have a total of 17 questions for you, and we'll ask them one by one, and then we'll circle back and give you the answers at the end. If you follow us on Facebook or Twitter or social media, you can always let us know how you did there, or comment on our website or YouTube, or even look for our post on Reddit and comment there. Anyway, good luck, and let's begin with the first question. Okay, so question one. Ice is a Valyrian steel blade, the ceremonial longsword belonging to House Stark. It's a very large sword indeed, and is even described in the early execution scene in A Game of Thrones as being taller than a certain character. Our question is, which character is Ice described as being taller than in that scene? Yeah, I remember it's said to be as wide across as a man's hand, but which character is it described as being taller than? Can you remember that from very early on in the books? Anyway, onwards to question two. In A Game of Thrones, both Daenerys and Ned Stark think about Jaime Lannister, named Kingslayer for this very deed, opening the throat of Mad King Ares with his sword. So our question is, what was unusual or unique about Jamie's sword, this sword that killed Ares? Okay, so what is the unique characteristic of the sword Jamie used to kill Ares Targaryen? On to question three. By ancient custom, the Starks of Winterfell placed swords across the lap of each that had been the Lord of Winterfell in their crypts. What blades are used for this ancient custom? And we're looking for a type of metal and the type of sword. Yes, so what kind of blade are used by the Starks in this ancient custom down in the crypts? Can you remember that? Onwards to question four. Bran is very interested in Westerosi lore and legends, and at one point thinks about the twins Sir Eric and Sir Arik. This pair, according to a tale Bran has heard, both suffered sword-related deaths. So how did Sir Eric and Sir Arik die? So the tale of Sir Eric and Sir Arik, we want to know how did they die? And question five it has to do with Arya. Arya was never interested in the sewing needle early in A Game of Thrones, but her brother Jon Snow presented her with her own sword, which is a symbolic replacement for the sewing needle and is appropriately and ironically named needle by Arya. The blade is thin and light, suitable for a young girl. But our question is, who made needle for Jon to present to Arya? Yeah, Needle is a blade that serves Arya really well through the story, but who made it? Can you remember? Okay, on to question number six. Through the eyes of Daenerys in Essos, we get to see the Dothraki blades called Arax. These are described as long, razor-sharp blades and are also noted to be half-sword and half-what. 
Okay, so the description of the Dothraki Arak, remember we're looking for the book canon description, a half sword and half what? Now on to question seven. Joffrey Baratheon owns three different swords during the events of A Song of Ice and Fire, one in each of the first three books. So what are the names of Joffrey's three swords? And all three are required for the point. Yeah, so we're going to be very strict there. You need to get all three of Joffrey's swords to get this point. Can you remember them all? And on to question number eight. In A Game of Thrones, when Jon is first awarded Jor Mormont's Valyrian Steel Bastard Sword Longclaw, Night's Watchman Toad tells a short anecdote about a man he knew of who had a Valyrian steel razor. What apparently happened to the man with the Valyrian steel razor, according to Toad here? Okay, so Toad, whose real name is Totter, by the way, with a very amusing story about a Valyrian steel razor. And now on to question nine. In A Feast for Crows, Brienne tells Nimbledick about her idol, Sir Galadon of Morn. Legend has it Sir Galadon was a perfect knight, so it's no surprise that he's the hero of Brienne's. It's said that the maiden herself fell in love with him and gifted him with a magical blade. It was so formidable that he only unsheathed it three times because it made any fight unfair. So, what was Sir Galadon of Morn's blade called, the blade he received from the maiden? Yes, Sir Galadon, he must have been very impressive to win the affection of the maiden herself. And what was the gifted blade called? Okay, question 10. In A Clash of Kings, we hear about Lightbringer. First, Melisandre tries to recreate the fiery blade. And then later, we get the tale of the original legend from Salador San. The tale is about a man who spends many days and nights and three attempts trying to make a new kind of blade, the Red Sword of Heroes. Our question is, how many days and nights in total, including the failed attempts, did Azora High labour on the Red Sword of Heroes, according to Salador San's tale? Okay, so the total number of knights, including the failed attempts that it took for Azor Ahai to create the Red Sword of Heroes, that's going to be very challenging. I think you have to really remember the entire story there. So uh, good luck coming up with that one. On to question 11. Ramsay Snow, also known as Bolton, doesn't seem to favor a full-length sword. Instead, he likes something a bit shorter. He wears one of these on his hip and uses it to cut the suspicious pies that the Manderleys serve in Winterfell in a dance with dragons at Ramsay's wedding feast. What is the name of the type of blade that Ramsay was using there? Yes, so we're not asking for the name of the blade itself, just the type of blade that Ramsay carries. Okay, so I can hear you racking your brains for that one. I think that's quite tricky, but I also think some of you are going to get it. On to question 12. House Drum of the Iron Islands own a Valyrian steel sword, which was apparently won long ago by an ancestor who used his wits and a wooden cudgel to take the blade from an armoured knight. What is the name of House Drum's Valyrian steel sword? Okay, so the name of House Drum's Valyrian steel sword. On to question 13. Samuel Tarley reads old books in his time at the Wall. He finds one account of the last hero slaying others with a blade of what substance? We will say that both John and Sam equate it to Valyrian steel, but given that the Long Night apparently predated Valyria, the reader has some cause to be suspicious. So, what was the substance Sam mentioned as being used to slay others? Yes, so the last hero... What blade was he using there that's mentioned in A Dance with Dragons? 
Okay, and question number 14, and I like this one. Sir Arthur Dane carried a sword called Dawn, said to be carved from the heart of a fallen star. This mysterious blade is described as pale as milk glass, and despite not being Valyrian steel apparently, it shares the advantage of an ultra-sharp edge. We learn in Feast that a certain living character has actually been cut by Dawn whilst it was in the hands of Sir Arthur. So our question is, which living character has been cut by Dawn? Okay, so very tricky. Which living character has been cut by the great sword Dawn and lived to tell the tale? Question 15. Jerry and Lannister disappeared on a trip to Valyria to recover the Lannister Valyrian steel sword. What was the name of the Lannister blade, which is apparently still at large? Yeah, the ancestral Lannister blade. We know in the books that Tywin spent a long time trying to replace it. But what was the original called? Okay, question number 16. The Iron Throne was made from the swords of Aegon the Conqueror's vanquished foes and Beleriand's breath was used as a furnace. According to the songs, how many blades were used to make it? And to give you a clue here, I will say that it's a nice round number. Okay, so it's not... 779? No, it's would not it... definitely not 779, Lady Quinn. <laughs> okay, well, that would have been my guess, so shucks. All right, question 17, which is our final question, and it is a tricky one. In A Storm of Swords, Arya misremembers the name of one of Joffrey's swords. So earlier we asked about the names of Joffrey's three swords. Now we're asking about the misremembered name of one of those swords. Please give us this mistaken sword name. Yeah, we can't give you much more than that because we'll give the game away, but this is a really tricky question. It is the tiniest of tiny details. What is the misremembered name of one of Joffrey's swords that Aya thinks of? Okay, so that's all 17 questions. We're gonna loop back to the beginning and give you the answers. After this. Okay, so how do you guys think you've done? You won't have to wait long because we're going to get the answers right now. And the first question, if you could remember, is about how tall ice is. It's described as taller than a certain character very early on in game in that execution scene. And the answer is Rob Stark. Yeah, that's right. The answer is Rob Stark. And we have a quote here. Lord Eddard Stark dismounted in his ward Theon Greyjoy brought forth the sword. Ice, that sword was called. It was as wide across as a man's hand and taller even than Rob. The blade was Valyrian steel, spell-forged and dark as smoke. Nothing held an edge like Valyrian steel. Okay, so now question two was uh, about Jaime's sword, the sword that he used to kill Aerys Targaryen. What was unusual or unique about it? And the answer is, it was gilded, meaning it was coated with gold. And we'll accept the answer that the sword was golden. Yes, yeah, so gilded or golden sword, they'll, they'll work for the answer. And I've got a quote here from Daenerys. The polished skulls of the last dragons staring down sightlessly from the walls of the throne room while the Kingslayer opened father's throat with a golden sword. So you can see that she talks of it as if it's a solid gold sword, but we do hear from Ned that it is simply gilded, coated with gold. Okay, and on to question three, which was about the swords being placed across the lap of the old lords of Winterfell in their crypts. And the answer we were looking for was iron longswords. 
Yeah, that's right, iron long swords, and we have a quote here. By ancient custom, an iron long sword had been laid across the lap of each who had been Lord of Winterfell to keep the vengeful spirits in their crypts. And some of you might remember that we did talk about what the significance of those iron long swords might be in our first Rob episode not too long ago. Okay, so question four had to do with Sir Eric and Sir Eric, one of those Westerosi legends that Bran has heard and admired. How did Sir Eric and Sir Eric die? Well, according to the tale Bran has heard, the twins Sir Eric and Sir Eric fought each other to the death and died on each other's swords. Yeah, the answer we're looking for is that they did die on each other's swords. And the quote from A Game of Thrones is here. The twins Sir Eric and Sir Eric, who had died on one another's swords hundreds of years ago, when brother fought sister in the war the singers called the Dance of the Dragons. Okay, so moving on to question number five. This one was about Arya's needle, where we asked, who made the sword? And the answer, I think a lot of you are going to have got this, I think, it was Micken. Yeah, that's right. John tells Arya in Game of Thrones, I had Micken make this special. The Bravos use swords like this in Pentos and Mir and the other free cities. It won't hack a man's head off, but it can poke him full of holes if you're fast enough. And now question six, you remember, was about those Dothraki blades, the Arax. They are described as half sword and half what in the books. And the answer is half sword and half scythe. Yeah, that's the description. Here it is from the Danny Drogo wedding. She heard a shout, saw a shove, and in the blink of an eye, the Arax were out. Long, razor-sharp blades half sword and half scythe. As we know, a Dothraki wedding without at least three deaths is deemed a dull affair. And one thing to note is that George has said that book cannon Arax are more like the curved swords the Turks used to use than the semi-circular kind of hacking weapons that were depicted in the TV show, in case that has kind of influenced your headcanon. Okay, on to question number seven. Joffrey Baratheon owns three different swords during the events of A Song of Ice and Fire. So we asked you to name those three swords. And I think this one is actually fairly tricky. The three were Lion's Tooth, Heart Eater, and of course, Widow's Wail. Yeah, and of course, we know what happened to Lion's Tooth. That's the one that gets tossed into the trident by Arya. And in Clash of Kings, he has a sword that has a ruby cut in the shape of a heart in the pommel, set between a lion's jaws. And he calls it Heart Eater and forces Sansa to kiss it. And in A Storm of Swords, he has a new blade given to him as a gift at his wedding. And that, of course, is Widow's Whale, which most of you will remember was fashioned from the Stark greatsword, Ice. So those are Joffrey's three swords. And now on to question eight, which had to do with Toad's tale about the man with the Valyrian steel razor. What happened to that man? Well, of course, the only thing that would happen to a man that tried to shave with a Valyrian steel razor, he cut his own head off. I love these little stories that you can sometimes forget about. And then on a reread, you kind of rediscover them. I really like this one. And I've got the quote. The bastard blade glittered in the pale sunlight, dark and deadly. Valyrian steel, he declared solemnly, trying to sound as pleased and proud as he ought to have felt. I heard of a man who had a razor made of Valyrian steel, declared Toad. He cut his head off trying to shave. So that's Toad's tale. How many of you got that? And on to question nine. And this is the one from Feast about Brienne's kind of hero, Sir Galadon of Morn. We asked... What was the name of Sir Galadon's magical blade? And the answer is the Just Made. 
Yeah, that's right. Remember Brienne tells the story to our old pal Nimble Dick Crab? Sir Galadin was a champion of such valor that the maiden herself lost her heart to him. She gave him an enchanted sword, a token of her love, the just maid it was called. No common sword could check her, nor any shield withstand her kiss. Sir Galadin bore the just maid proudly, but only thrice did he unsheathe her. He would not use the maid against a mortal man, for she was so potent as to make any fight unfair. Okay, and now we go on to question 10, which had to do with another famous blade, Lightbringer. In the legend of Lightbringer, according to Salador's son, how many days and nights in total, including the failed attempts, did Azor Ahai labor on his red sword of heroes? And the answer to this uh, might have been the trickiest question of the quiz, at least so far, because you really had to remember the whole story that Salador San told Davos, and then do some math on top of that. Uh, the answer is 180 days and nights. Yeah, 180 days and nights. Azura Hai first took 30 days and nights, and then he plunged the blade into water and it burst. Then he took another 50 days and nights, and he killed a lion, and the blade shattered. Finally, he took 100 more days and nights and plunged it into Nissa Nissa's heart, his wife's. 30 plus 50 plus 100 takes you to 180 days and nights. So well done if you got that one correct. And on to question 11. It's about Ramsay, who, as we said, doesn't seem to favour a full-length blade. We asked what type of blade does he use instead, and the answer is a falchion. Yeah, that's right, a falchion. And if you remember those really tasty-sounding pies that Wyman Manderley brought for Ramsay's wedding feast, it says here of the pies... Ramsay hacked off slices with his falchion, and Wyman Manderley himself served, presenting the first steaming portions to Roose Bolton and his fat Frey wife, the next to Sir Hostine and Sir Anus, the sons of Walder Frey. The best pie you've ever tasted, my lords, the fat lord declared. Wash it down with arbor gold and savor every bite. I know I shall. So, Ramsay cutting into that Frey pie with his falchion there. Okay, and on to question 12, which had to do with House Drum's Valyrian steel sword. Quite simply, what was the name of that sword? And the answer is Red Rain. Yeah, Red Rain, and here's the tale about Red Rain. It was a good beginning. Aaron heard shouts of approval, but they dwindled as the old man began to tell the story of the glory of the drums. He spoke of Dale the Dread, Roar in the Reaver, the hundred sons of Gorman Drum, the old father. He drew red rain and told them how Hilmar Drum, the cunning, had taken the blade from an armoured knight with wits and a wooden cudgel. And by the way, if you've never heard of cudgel, it's a kind of hammer. Okay, so red rain for question number 12. On to number 13. It's about Samuel reading an account at the wall about the last hero slaying others with a blade of what substance? And the answer we were looking for is dragon steel. Yeah, that's right, dragon steel. And here's a quote with a sort of recipe for dealing with the others. The armor of the others is proof against most ordinary blades, if the tales can be believed, and their own swords are so cold they shatter steel. Fire will dismay them, though, and they are vulnerable to obsidian. I found one account of the Long Knight that spoke of the last hero slaying others with a blade of dragon steel. Supposedly, they could not stand against it. And for all things dragon steel, othery, and the Long Knight, why not check out or revisit our episode on all those subjects? That's episode 8, Fear is for the Long Knight, where there's crackpots aplenty. Okay, now on to question 14, or answer 14. This had to do with the great sword Dawn. We asked, which living character has been cut by Dawn and lived to tell the tale? And the answer is Jamie Lannister. Yeah, maybe some of you would have had to think outside the box to figure this one out. 
Here's Jamie standing vigil for his father Tywin. It had been years since his last vigil, and I was younger then, a boy of 15 years. He had worn no armour then, only a plain white tunic. The sept where he'd spent the night was not a third as large as any of the great sept's seven transepts. Jamie had laid his sword across the warrior's knees, piled his armour at his feet, and knelt upon the rough stone floor before the altar. When dawn came, his knees were raw and bloody. All knights must bleed, Jamie, Sir Arthur Dane had said when he saw. Blood is the seal of our devotion. With dawn, he tapped him on the shoulder. The pale blade was so sharp that even that light touch cut through Jamie's tunic, so he bled anew. He never felt it. A boy knelt, a knight rose, the young lion, not the king slayer. And so that is a quote from A Feast for Crows. Obviously, it's Jamie being knighted by his idol, Sir Arthur Dane. Okay, so Jamie Lannister for question 14, 15. We asked you, what is the ancestral Valyrian steel blade? of House Lannister called that seems to have been lost some time ago? And the answer is Bright Roar. That's right, and we have a quote here that tells us the great sword Bright Roar had been lost when the second King Tommen carried it back to Valyria on his fool's quest. He had never returned, nor had Uncle Jerry, the youngest and most reckless of his father's brothers, who had gone seeking after the lost sword some eight years past. So, Jerry and Lannister off seeking the Valyrian steel sword, Bright Roar, and of course there are many theories in the fandom about where old Jerry and Lannister could be. And now question 16 had to do with the Iron Throne and the number of blades that were used to make it. And the answer, we gave you a clue, is a round number, is 1,000. Yeah, we asked you how many blades according to the songs. Who knows if the songs are accurate? But anyway, here's the quote. The song said it had taken a thousand blades to make it, heated white hot in the furnace breath of Beleriand the Black Dread. The hammering had taken 59 days. The end of it was this hunched black beast made of razor edges and barbs and ribbons of sharp metal. A chair that could kill a man and had, if the stories could be believed. And that's Ned in A Game of Thrones. Okay, so a thousand swords is the answer. Moving on to question number 17, the final question. This one was about Arya misremembering the name of one of Joffrey's swords. I think this is the most obscure question we've asked today. So if you get this one, well done indeed. The answer is lion's paw and that's instead of lion's tooth yeah that's lion's paw and of course we hear that in the scene where the hound has been captured by the brotherhood without banners and has been accused of killing the boy micah in the face of this accusation it says he shrugged and said i was joffrey's sworn shield the butcher's boy attacked a prince of the blood but then Arya speaks up. That's a lie. It was me. I hit Joffrey and threw Lion's Paw in the river. Micah just ran away like I told him. So there it is, Arya thinking of Joffrey's sword as Lion's Paw instead of Lion's Tooth. And, of course, uh, George has said that this is one of those purposeful misrememberings that he has inserted into the text in called uh, The Unreliable Narrator is in the same vein as Sansa's so-called unkiss and Arya misremembering her own age, which are things that he uses to add more realism to the narration. Yeah, and so that's our hardest question of the day. We saved it to last. If you have Lion's Paw written down, then you have our full respect. Okay, so we really hope you enjoyed today's quiz. It was number three. There will, of course, be a number four. We really enjoy throwing these out at you now and again to give you some extra content that we don't have to research for weeks and weeks. 
Okay, so be sure to shoot us your scores on our various social medias. We do like to hear how you've done and see that we're getting the questions not too difficult, but not too easy. I hope we've got it right. So we'll see you next time for the next quiz. And of course, there'll be a new full-length Radio Westeros episode for you all soon. Cheers.